Hi everyone and welcome back to the Stitch Sessions. It's me, Karen. I love all things crochet and crafty. So if you're new here, I'm so happy that you've decided to join us today. And if you're not new here, welcome back. You can tell by what I've got here, the project we're going to work on as we are entering into the holiday season or the holiday kind of ramp up to the season. And every year I always like to do at least one new stocking tutorial. Now this one, super, I know I see this every year, but this one is super easy. All you have to know is your half double crochet stitch and you are ready to rock. So we do work into the back loops and the front loops to create this knit like effect. So it's really cushy and cozy. I just love it. It really reminds me of like those old fashioned type of Father Christmas stockings. And because I'm really into generally the Victorian theme Christmases, this falls in line perfectly. Now, if you're super new, do not be intimidated by creating this sock like structure. It is all done creating one panel. Okay, so we start at the toe and we just crochet up and down, up and down, up and down. And then we add an extra chain to create the length for the leg part. We continue up and down and we go over and then we continue until we're ready to then only go back down to those first few rows. So essentially what happens is you're creating a T or I guess it would be an upside down T, but like when you first create it, it will be a T. So imagine this opened and all we do then is we take that panel and we fold it in half. We seam up the sides. Whoops, not that side. We seam up the side and the bottom and then we cinch in the toe and then you've got your super easy stocking, okay? And then of course we add the, this beautiful fur trim at the top and a hanger and your stocking is good to go. Now this particular stocking measures 14 inches in length by 11 inches in width, I guess you would call it. So I would consider this a medium sized stocking. Um, it's not quite small, but it's definitely not a super large stocking. So it's perfect for hanging on the mantle or wherever you choose. So let's dive right in. We'll talk about the materials we're gonna need for our stocking and then we'll get stitching it up. So the yarn that I'm gonna be using for our stocking, one of the yarns is this fur yarn by Loops and Threads. Now I got this, I can't remember if it was last season or the season before, and uh, but you're, they always come out with new types of fur yarn. You don't have to actually top it with fur yarn, you can just top it with some white yarn and create your um, cuff like that. But because I've got a lot of this and it's perfect for a stocking, I generally save this for Christmas projects. So just a little something. I know this fur yarn always seems delectable when you're in the store, but if you're a little bit newer, this is going to be very frustrating. See how beautiful and fuzzy that is? It's all lovely, but when you're trying to find your stitches to work into, it can be very challenging. So that's why I just like to use it on things like trim. Um, but if you're up for the challenge and want to create a larger project, go for it. But I just wanted to kind of warn you guys on that. You won't need a lot of it. I mean, this comes in about a 200 gram ball, but I mean, you'll use very, very little amounts of it. Now for the main body, and I've got some left over here, I am going to be using the Craft Smart yarn that I used actually in our Dragon Tail Drama Queen shawl. And that was October's shawl for our Shall We Crochet series. I enjoyed working with that yarn so much. And in fact, the colorway lent itself perfectly to that kind of vintagey Christmas. So that is what I'm using for that. And this is just leftover from the last skein I used for that shawl. And the I'm using the same color. It's called Clay Ombre. And one skein, by the way, because I used one skein to make this, will give you this exact um, stocking. Okay. So if you want to make several stockings, you're just know that you need one skein to create each stocking. Okay. And those come in 120 gram skeins, just to give you an idea of the amount that you're using. 
All right, and the hook size I'm gonna be using for this project is one of my favorites, a six millimeter hook, which is also known as a J or a size 10. As always, make sure you have a handy pair of scissors and a yarn needle on hand to sew in those ends at the end. Okay, gang, let's get started on creating our stocking. Okay, so we're going to begin by placing a slip knot on our hook. And we're gonna start up by chaining a chain of 21. So we have one, two. Okay, so once you have your 21 chains, you just wanna make sure that it's nice and even and it's not twisted. And by the way, anytime you make more than one of something, like if you're making booties or socks, in this case, I'm making a second stocking, don't be surprised that they're not going to be exact replicas. For whatever reason, as humans, we either uh, tighten our tension or we loosen our tension the more we work on projects. So if you're second stocking, for example, is slightly smaller or slightly larger, that's totally normal. So that's the beauty of things that are handmade. Okay, so now we're going to begin round number one. So we are going to find the second chain from your hook. So we have one and two. We never count that loop that's on the hook, remember. Okay, now into that second chain, we are going to place a half double crochet. So we're going to yarn over first and insert to pull up a loop. So you'll have three loops, you yarn over and pull through all three. And that is what we're gonna do into every single chain for this row. Yarn over, insert, just like that. And so at the end of row one, you will now have 20 stitches. So go ahead and do that to the end of your chain and I'll meet up with you to talk about row number two. Okay, so row number one is complete and I have 20 stitches, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to row number two and we're gonna chain one first, nice and loose like that, and then we're gonna turn our work. And we're going to continue with our half double crochets, but in row number two, what we're gonna do is we are gonna work into the back loops only. So see, normally we would work right into the full stitch, so you've got that V there. But in this row, we are gonna work into the back loops. It just looks like you're going down into the center of the stitch. So you're still gonna yarn over, and we're gonna go right away into the very first stitch here. So that chain one kind of doesn't really count as anything. So we insert into the back loops, pull up as usual, and resolve, okay? Yarn over into the next stitch, you do the same thing. So just to make sure that you stay consistent because it's easy to think that this is our stitch here because see there's side Vs and there's top Vs. That's the funny thing about the half double crochet. Make sure into the back loops only that you're always going into those top Vs because for row three, that will make a difference because we are gonna be using different loops for row number three. So into the back loop, one half double crochet into each stitch all the way to the end. Okay, so I'm just at the end of row two and I just wanted to come on here to make sure that you guys don't miss that last stitch. This was the turning chain here, right? So it's easy to miss. So just wanna turn it over there and insert into the back loop there. And I always recommend the first couple of rows anyway, just count backwards and make sure that you have your 20 stitches. If you only have 19, then you know you've got one more to go. So by going into the back loops only, you can see that it's created this little ridge here and that just creates a nice little knit-like effect. So if you look closely, it gives these Vs a chance to be more pronounced and pushed forward. Now we're gonna try to keep in line with that for row number three. So row number three, you're gonna chain one, you'll turn your work, and we 
We definitely have a front side and a back side. So where the ridges are is the front side and where it's a little flatter is the back side. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work into loops again, but this time we're going to work into the bottom, the front bottom loop. So see, this is the top back loop. So if I just point here, top back loop, front loop, but then we have the bottom front loops, which is that one right there. So that's the one we're gonna pick up. So I'm gonna make sure I go right to my first one, always start right away in the first one, and then resolve like a half double crochet. Okay, and again, yarn over. I'm gonna to go to the bottom front loop, not the top. Remember, it's on its side, and half double crochet. And again, front bottom, half double, and right there. Very nice. And I'll just do one more, just so you guys can see what the effect is. Okay, so when I take that out and I turn over to my front, look at that, this is my favorite way to do it. So that's really pushing. So what came forward is the top two loops. See, when we're here, we're pushing forward the side loops. This is why this knit like stitch is a little bit looser than this one. I know sometimes it might be challenging to see because of the darker yarn, but so that's the side loops being pushed forward and these are the top loops. And that's what creates that knit like effect, okay? So for row number three, you're just gonna continue placing one half double crochet into the front of bottom loops of each stitch. And at the end of row three, you wanna still make sure you have 20 stitches. Okay, again, I'm coming up to the end of the row and I just wanted to kind of show you if you're a little bit newer. So this is usually that chain one when you came around. So just kind of follow where the bottom loop is here. And so there is the back loop or the bottom loop there. I just insert and there you go. And then when I turn it over, I can see that the ridge was pushed forward. Just like that. So row number three is complete. And by the way, I forgot to mention that doing this in this fashion, one row in the back loops and one row in the bottom loops, this creates what's known as the camel stitch effect, okay? So that just means it's, it creates that knit-like effect. Look at how pretty that is. Okay, so this is now, you're, you're set to go because all you need to do now is repeat row two and three until you reach row number 14, okay? So let me just start off here again. So when we go back to row number two, you're gonna chain one, turn your work, and now we're gonna go back into working into the back loop. So you're gonna alternate, okay? So we're gonna go into the back loops only. That means we're gonna go back in through the top, just like that. Okay, so all the odd numbered rows go into the back loops only. I'm sorry, all the even numbered rows go into the back loops only, and all the odd numbered rows go into the front bottom loops. Okay, just like that. So that is what you're gonna do. Like I said, you're gonna do this until row number 14. So what's happening right now? We're actually starting at the very end of our toe part, and so we've created those first two rows, first three rows, I should say. Then we're gonna repeat it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until you get 14 rows. Once you've completed your 14 rows, I'm gonna come back and meet up with you so we can talk about how you're going to extend this up through the leg to create the larger part of your stocking. Okay, nice and easy. So I will meet up with you once you've completed row number 14. Okay, so I have completed my 14 rows and you can really see the ribbing coming out now on this side. So that's the front and that is what the back looks like, which it has its own texture on its own. Okay, so what we've done is we've completed the toe portion. So if I grab the first one I've done, so this is the part that we've just completed, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to extend our panel up 
to create the leg portion of our stocking. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna add some extra chains. So once you finish row number 14, you're actually gonna continue on now and you are going to chain up 30. So I have one, two. Okay, so I have done my 30 chains. So that's my 14th row. And now I've extended the length another 30 chains. So in total now, I'm gonna have 50 stitches. And in general, just in case you're making yours a little larger, a little smaller, in general, you kind of want this length to be, um, or sorry, you want the toe part to be one third of the, the length in height. That's just kind of what I've noticed from other stocking designs, whether it's knit or from fabric. And so I was actually gonna do an additional 40, but keep in mind, we're gonna put a cuff on this, right? So if I had done the 40, so we've got 20 stitches here, so 20 times three uh, is 60. So that means I'd need an additional 40 in case you're wondering where I came from, came up with the 40 stitches. But then because I know I'm gonna add a cuff, there will be an, you know, a bit more height. And because of that, I just thought then it would look too long, the leg portion in comparison to the toe. And it would look more like a, well, I guess it would look more like a long stocking, which is not bad. But for me, I like proportionally things to look um, to my to my taste, basically. So this is why I only went up to 30 because we are gonna add that cuff. Okay, so you've got your 30. And so now what you wanna do is just chain one more. This is just gonna give us an opportunity to turn. It's not really gonna count as anything. And now you're gonna go back into that second chain from the hook. So the last chain doesn't count as anything. You go into that second chain and we're just gonna half double crochet. Okay, just like that. And then you're gonna half double crochet and make your way all the way back to the toe part of your stocking. So I'm making my way closer back to where my toe was. So I just continue placing one half double crochet into each chain. And then there I have one more chain left, right there. And then I'm back into working into regular stitches. Okay, so that was the last chain. Now you wanna pay attention because I am on the back side, yeah? So now we wanna continue picking up with our ribbing effect. So I know that I need to go into the bottom front loops here. Okay, so I'm gonna yarn over. And instead of going in through the top, I'm gonna to go in through the bottom front, just as usual. And now really your chain has been fully connected to the rest of your work so that your panel is now gonna become like an L, which is the first half of that T shape that we're looking to create in forming our stocking. Okay, and then you're just gonna continue doing this as usual to the end of your row. So at the end of row number 15, you're gonna have 50 stitches. Okay, so I've completed row number 15. So I've got something that looks, looks like a soup ladle actually, funny like that, okay? And so all you're gonna do, do your usual chain one, turn your work and now we're at the front of our work so we know we're going to work into the back loops only so you're just going to turn your stitch go right away into the very first stitch and do the usual so you should be becoming very familiar with how we're working this pattern now so you're going to continue on to row 16. and from now on each row is going to have 50 stitches like i said so you're now just going to keep repeating the pattern we've been repeating until you have 28 rows of the 50 stitches, okay? So 28 plus 14 will give you a total of 42 rows. So you're gonna keep going now until you hit row number 42. 
So I'll set you loose and I'll meet back up with you in a little bit. Okay, so I've completed my additional 29 rows. And so now we're ready to do the other part of the toe. So you've got something that looks like this. It's like a thick L kind of thing. And so the idea is that this will then fold over just like that. And then we're going to seam up the bottom and seam along the sides here. So we're just missing the uh, the other side of the toe. So now what we're going to do is for the next row, we are going to decrease the number of stitches we have. Um, so we currently had 50 stitches, five zero that we've been working on for the last few rows. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to go back down to our 14 stitches. So in total right now, I have 43 rows. So we're going to do an additional 14 rows, which is going to give us a total of 57 rows all together. So let me just show you how we're going to go back down to our 14 stitches. So as usual, you're going to chain one and turn your work. And just an FYI for those that decide to make theirs a little bit larger, um, However many rows you decide to go up, make sure it's going to be an odd number of rows because you need to be on the bottom side in order to create the other part of your, your toe, okay? So right now I've got 29 rows after the toe that I've created. So that again gives us 47 rows in total and now we're going to begin row number 48. Okay so if you're talking about from row one all the way up until we've got this here we have 47 rows and we're going to start on row 48. So um, this is the front side so you can see the ridges here. So that means we're going to work into the back loops only. So we never deviate from working back loops and front bottom loops, okay? So again, we go into the back loops of this row, and all you're gonna do is what you've been doing all along, but for this row, you're only gonna go as far as 20 stitches. All right, so I have done my 20 stitches. Okay, so there I am there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain one and turn my work. So that's what brings us down to the 20 stitches we started with. So we're not gonna finish this row here. So I turn my work and I'm on the back side. So that usually means I'm gonna work into the front bottom loops to work my half double crochets. And that's it. That's the secret to <laughs> creating length and then coming back down from your length in your project. So you're going to always now have 20 stitches for each row and you're going to proceed to create 14 rows of these shorter sides or this short side here. So you had 14 rows for the toe on the other side and we just want to make sure it's nice and even so we're going to have 14 rows on this side. See that? So you're continuing to create that there. See, so you can see it's starting to form on this side. So that's what we meant by the upside down T. So if I turn it this way, and now we're building out the other side. So that's why it looks kind of like a T shape. Okay guys, do your 14 rows, and then we're gonna come back and talk about sewing up our stocking. Okay, so I've completed the last 14 rows. So now you can see where that T-shape comes into effect. So if I turn it this way. So right now we have what looks like a big T. So now it's time to sew our sides together to create our stocking. So I'm actually gonna turn this side down and this is the wrong side. So you wanna make sure when you fold your stocking for now, that the wrong side is facing out. So why is this the wrong side? So you can see a few ridges there, but if I turn it over, this side is the side that has that 
kind of knit look. And that's the side we want to be on the outside. So we're gonna sew this up using the slip stitch method. You're more than welcome to use the whip stitch method, but for things like stockings, I like to use the slip stitch method. I just find it has a little bit more sustenance to it. And so that's what I'm gonna use. Okay, so I've got the wrong side. So the right side is facing up and I'm folding it over so that I have the wrong sides facing outward. And so now you can see this is the basic shape of the stocking, okay? Now I have not snipped off my yarn because I'm going to continue working with this strand to seam up the bottom side of my stocking, okay? So that is what we're gonna do here. We just wanna make sure it's nicely lined up. So if you had 14 rows here and 14 rows here, they should all line up nicely here. Okay, so what I wanna do is make sure that the first row is lined up nicely with the first row of this panel here. Okay, so first of all, I've just finished my last stitch here. I'm just gonna chain one, just give me a little something to work with. And now I'm gonna take my other side and what I wanna do is actually just slip stitch back into where I just created the chain one. I'm gonna insert my hook there, and then I'm gonna find the very first stitch here, which was, see that was our foundation chain. I'm gonna insert there. I'm gonna sew in that end at the end. And then I'm just gonna slip stitch through all of them. So I'm gonna pull through there, pull through here, and through that chain. And so now I've officially attached this end together. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to slip stitch all the way down until we get to the end. So you're gonna have to kind of eyeball it basically because we're working into that raw edge or the side of stitches and we worked half double crochets. So the height is not always as straightforward as like a double crochet, for example. We know that we can put two stitches into the side of a double. We generally know we can put one stitch into the side of a single crochet row. This is a half double, so it doesn't always fit perfectly. So you just wanna eyeball it. So I'm gonna go into the next little spot here, and I'm gonna try and find a relatively comparable spot in the panel in front of it. And then I'm just gonna simply slip stitch. Now what you wanna try and keep in mind is that you always wanna pick up a few loops. So I just worked in there. I'm gonna move over here and pick up those two loops there and then go across the way and pick up the next two loops. So I wanna stay kind of close to the top, but I don't wanna be super close because I want this to have strength. Because at the end of the day, if you are gonna use your uh, stocking and you're gonna put items in there, you wanna make sure that they're staying nice and secure. At the same time, you don't want to be going too far down because now you're losing a lot of fabric there. So again, you just wanna gauge, and I always like to kind of stop as I go. As long as this sits nice and flush and it's not bunching, then I know I'm, I'm okay. If it starts to bunch, it's either because you're, going to, you're creating too much space between the stitches or maybe you're putting too many stitches close together. So I'm gonna do a few more of these here. So I'm gonna go into this next little spot here, looks good, couple loops. And then I'm gonna go into this area here, couple loops there, and I'm pulling through all of those loops on the hook. See, so you're creating a little slip stitch across. So again, I'm gonna find next little area here, and then coinciding into the next panel and I'm gonna slip stitch, okay? So you can see, there's the tail there. So you can see now that they are attached together. And then when I turn it over, it just has this nice seamless movement. So you wanna try and kind of make sure that they sit nice and evenly together so that the rib rows um, match up, but it's not the end of the world if they don't. You see how they're matching up? If you're following along and you can kind of see where each row is matching up, you should be just 
fine. At the end of the day, it's a handmade stocking, so it's gonna have its own little personality. So you're gonna do that all the way to the end. I'm gonna come back on just when I'm kind of at the second last row, because I do something a little different here at the end, just to give it a little bit of a heel effect. So I'm gonna meet back up with you here in a bit. Okay, so I have slip stitched my way all the way up to the end there. So this is where you can see this is where the slip stitch is running. And so when I open it up, I like to just kind of see how it's looking. So you've got a seam that runs like that. Now, of course, it is going to be obvious because it is changing colors as you go along, but that's part of that patchwork look that we're going for. And so I have stopped just short of here. And the reason why is instead of seaming straight across at the end, I'm actually going to angle upwards. And this is just going to give that illusion of creating a little rounded edge for the heel. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to now slip stitch across this way. So I'm now going to insert further down and slip stitch and then continue going further down to slip stitch until I've gone across on an angle. I'm just gonna have to feel this out a little bit. And then further down this way. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I get right to the very end. There we go just like that. So you can see I've created a little stitch here so that when I turn it outside, this point, right? So when I open it up, because eventually you're gonna turn it right side out, just like this. Oops, so there you go. So see how it just kind of creates a little bit more shape there in the heel instead of having that sharp turn. So just a little trick there. So at this point, all I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to snip my yarn. Okay, like that. I'm gonna fasten off. Then I'm gonna weave in that end and this end. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing on the inside of the leg and the toe. So you will start, the method will be the same. You're gonna start at the top though, really important here. You wanna start at the top and you're gonna slip stitch all the way down, making sure that that bend meets up perfectly before you hit the toe. Now the beautiful thing about this side is that there's stitches to work into and there's the chain foundation chain to work into. So actually you'll be able to see exactly how to match up because of course we had the equal number of stitches. Then you will continue to slip stitch around and then of course these are raw edges again. So you're just going to do the same method you did before and you go right to the end and then what you want to do is you want to leave a long tail before you fasten off or before you snip your yarn. Okay, because see we have this opening here. With that tail, we're then gonna cinch in our toe. So that's what's gonna create that um, finished stocking look. So I'm gonna leave you to slip stitch the top. I'm gonna meet up with you once you've got your tail and then I'll show you guys how to cinch up your toe. Okay, so I have finished sewing up my sides here. So you can see now a little bit more uniformly the slip stitch falls really nicely into there. Okay, so we've gone down the way here, snipped off my yarn, I've left oh, about 12 to 16 inches here. And so now what we're gonna do is we are going to cinch up the opening of our toes. So you just want to thread your yarn. Just like that. And now what we're gonna do is we are just going to weave our yarn needle back and forth. So I'm just gonna go in, then out, and in and out. You don't have to do it for every single stitch, but even if you go every couple of stitches, you're okay. And so that's what you're gonna do. 
just like that. Okay, and you do this all the way around until you come back to where you started. See, and as you go, you want to cinch it just so it starts kind of bunching closed. Okay, so we back and forth, back and forth until you get back to the top again. Okay, so I finished sewing it all up. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our stocking right side out. And just kind of go in there and shape, shape out the heel and the toes. So that's what it looks like on the outside. So there you have it. So your stocking is, the stocking shape is complete. So you can see there. Now I know it looks like, wow, that toe looks really long and large for this length of stocking. But don't forget, we are gonna do the cuff, right? So that's gonna add some height. And that's it. So e super easy construction. So as I had mentioned, one panel, nice and easy, and then you sew it up. So the basic structure of this stocking is very simple. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna get our fur yarn and we're gonna add our cuff onto our stocking. Okay, so we've brought back our fur yarn. Just gonna pull it a little bit. This is where things might be a little tricky because the fur yarn sometimes can make it a little kind of tricky to see where you're placing your hook. But you just wanna take it one step at a time. So I'm gonna start basically on the outside seam here. And so you can see here the texture of this fur yarn. So that's the actual strand. There's the fur on the outside. So I'm going to insert my hook right about there. And actually for the cuff, I don't wanna to be too close to the edge. I actually do wanna dip down a bit. So I would say dip down about two, actually let's do three stitches below. And you'll see why in a moment. Okay, and then you're gonna slip stitch to join, just like that. So we're basically gonna do single crochet stitches, but they're gonna be what we call spike stitches because we're going down uh, two rows into the third, okay? So then again, so we've got our tail on the inside. And so basically we're gonna go into each row, okay? So we've just went into there, and now we're gonna go into the braided section which is right here. So I'm gonna count one, two, and three. And then pull up really nice and gentle, pull it up, and then single crochet. You can already see how it would be easy to get lost in the stitches there. Now I've come up to the space, so I'm gonna match it up here. So I'm gonna go into that space there and gently pull it up before I single crochet. So see how that's already creating a nice uh, thick border to begin, and it creates a little bit of a more finished look on the bottom as opposed to if you just start right at the top ridge there. And that's what you're going to do all the way around. In fact, I am actually going to skip these um, ribbed rows here. I'm going to work in the gaps because I found that when you're working to every single one, it starts to bunch up a lot at the top. You don't want too many stitches. So I'm going to go into the next little area there, making sure it's in line, insert my hook. Pull it up nice and relaxed. So keep it very lax there. And then I move into the next space, which is right there. And that's it. See, and now it's getting all lost in there. Okay, so it's basically a one spiked single crochet stitch all the way around. You're gonna keep it going all the way until you get back to the beginning. Now, what I would recommend if you're super new is place a, a safety pin or a stitch marker right at the top of that first stitch so you'll be able to find it a lot easier when you come back around, okay? So I'm gonna finish mine and I'll meet you back here in a bit. Okay, so now I've come to the end, see there, of my round here, and I'm going to slip stitch to that first stitch there, which I can feel out. So I'm gonna slip stitch to join. 
So round one of my cuff is complete. And actually, if you wanted to leave it like that, you could, okay? Um, but because I want my cuff to be a little thicker, so with my other one here, see the cuff was a little thicker. I just think a uh, slightly thicker cuff adds more length and then it just makes the toe a little bit more in proportion. So I am now gonna continue to do an additional two or three rounds. I think I did one, two, three. Yeah, I think I did an additional two rounds. So that is what I'm gonna do for this one. And if you're ever unsure and you're making two of these, for example, I just like lay them one next to the other and then you can just gauge the visual of what they look like. So the subsequent rounds are the ones that can be a little tricky because now it's a matter of trying to find the stitch. Now you'll notice that I just kind of felt my way through and I can feel where the stitches are, okay? Um, the cool thing is because of the fur, uh, if you go into a wrong stitch, it does not show up. So you are a-okay. So for subsequent round, I'm just gonna chain one and then I'll go back into that same stitch and I'm just gonna single crochet. Again, keeping them very loose. And at this point, I would definitely recommend to place a stitch marker here so you can remember where it is. And I'm just gonna put my little leftover yarn there. So that's my marker. And that's it, that's all. You're going to now move on to the next stitch and single crochet and continue on. So this is gonna add a little bit more depth to your cuff and it will also add length to the leg portion of your stocking. And then we're almost done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two more of these rounds. And then the last thing we'll have to do is our hanger. Okay, so I have finished my additional two rounds. So you can see it looks like that and I've compared it to my other stocking. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. They're sitting comparable. So I'm just gonna snip my yarn. And then pull that through. And then I will weave this end in. For now, I'm just gonna put it in. And I just wanna show you the final step, which is to place our hanger on here. So. We're just gonna bring our yarn back. Actually, I wonder if I can do it with this scrap piece I have here. And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna place a slip knot on our hook, leaving a little bit of a decent tail there. And then we're gonna chain up 20. One, two, three. Okay, so that little strand was not enough, but I do have 20 now, so I'm just going to Snip my yarn and then pull this through just like that. Okay, so you've got a chain length there. And now I wanna bring back my yarn needle and I'm gonna weave that in just like that. Now I'm gonna take my stocking and so how I did it here, as you can see, I went right to the base of the cuff and I just attached the two ends there so that when it's hanging, it looks like it's coming out from the cuff. I just find it, it's a nicer look. Some people might actually put their hanger on the outside. I just find if you do that, then the cuff tends to bend downwards. So I like to do it on the inside, even though that actually is the spot that I am uh, putting it in, but because then the cuff has something to rest against, it'll sit a little bit nicer. So a few things, these things to kind of take into consideration. So I can see my bend is here. So I'm just basically going to find right the base of that cuff. And I'm just going to feed that one side through. Whoops. Okay, just like that. Want to make sure that the chain doesn't come all the way through. See, that's the chain there. So once it's through enough, I'm just going to go back in through another end. And then I'll just take the 
thread out. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go to the other end. This is just my method, by the way. You might have a better method than I, but I find this is just the easiest one to do what I need to do. Okay, and then I do the same thing. I just want to make sure it's not twisted. I'm going to find the same spot. So I'm just going to, I don't want to go exactly the same spot. I want to go maybe a little bit over. All right, bring it out. And then also when I feed it back in, I'm going to feed it into a slightly different spot as well. And then bring it back out. And at that point, okay, so I have that. So these are the two ends. And this is the point where I like to kind of, make them a little more snug, and then I will knot it here. And of course, if you wanna sew it in a few more times back and forth, I always like to encourage that. I like to knot things three times, make them nice and sturdy. Then I pull on it, test it out, and I can see it just sneaks out there, and we are done. So all that's left is just to kind of weave in these ends, which I shall do. But for now, we are complete in our super simple stocking. So I hope you guys actually found this as simple as I said it would be. So I made a set of two. So you can see how the, the colorway changes. See? So if I had it this way, then the colorways um, match a little bit more together. And then this way colors match a little more together. I kind of like the idea of them being slightly different. It, uh, like I said, it gives that Victorian type of feel, which was very much handmade and um, you kind of make do with what you have idea. And that's what I really love about how these stockings came out. So one panel, you are good to go add some fur and a hanger, and I love it. So if you guys have any further questions about this tutorial today, you know you can always leave them for me in the comment box down below. And by the way, some of you have been so sweet, and you've just simply left comments like how beautiful you think the projects are or how excited you are to start your own, and I love to hear that. It encourages me to keep doing more projects, more come up with different ideas to challenge you guys and gives you something fun and interesting to do as well. So please do keep those coming. I so appreciate them. Um, some of you uh, prefer to email me directly, which I also love. So feel free to email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. And of course, as always, don't forget to visit me on the website at crochetcrafty.com where you'll find lots of bonus tools like sizing charts and uh, links to all of our uh, videos as well as some of our past crochet series. Um, and of course, sign up for my monthly newsletter. It's absolutely free. And I gift you a free written pattern every month just for saying thanks for coming along. And if you are interested in checking out some more written patterns, I am working on filling up my shop with more patterns. You can check that out on Etsy at Crochet Crafty Canada. And all those links you can find on the website. So don't forget, when you create your stocking, make sure to tag me. I'm on the socials on Facebook and Instagram, and I always love to see how your design comes out. I'm always curious, actually, more about the colorways you guys choose. It's, it's always so fascinating, and it's inspiring for me, because sometimes it gives me some really cool ideas, too. So make sure to come and say hi to me there. Now, if you're new here and you enjoyed this tutorial, I invite you to press that subscribe button and uh, you can come hang out with us every week and check out what are the new tutorials. I upload a brand new video every Wednesday morning. So guys, I hope you are having a great start to your holiday season and getting all of your crochet projects ready and that you're having fun. So happy crocheting. Take good care of yourselves as always. And I will see you guys in next week's session. Bye-bye.